So anyway, I'm just going out for a little bit of a morning walk. Walk. It's not raining, so I just generally walk around the yard. Um, even though I technically... Oh, you're coming for a walk. I technically do um, miss walking up and down my little hilly bit. But that's a paddock. That's a separate paddock now. So I just walk around the front. Walk around the side. Have the dog follow me a little bit, you know. <laughs> Here she comes. There you are. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I um, had this weird dream last night, but I can't remember what on earth it, it was about. But I woke up and I thought, oh, I shouldn't, I should write that dream down and remember it, but I didn't. And um, so I was like, oh, I don't remember it anymore. Um, I have no idea what it was about. It was probably not about anything in particular. Um, but I just thought, oh, that's a strange subject for a dream. So when I woke up, I thought, I'd better write that down, but I didn't. And now I've forgotten about it, so. Um. <laughs> Uh, it's a windy day once again. Um, it's really cold. Like I've got three layers on because that this air that's pulsing around is so cold that it just gets into you. It's like your blood could freeze. <laughs> I, I'm and I am concerned about getting the flu. I got my flu vax a few days ago, but. Um, it is so cold it just makes my throat want to have a cold and even though I'm back so I still feel like oh I still want to like I still want to have a cold hurry up and um because uh yeah so it's it's like I still want to have a cold because that wind's just like I, I have no idea if there has any flu molecules or COVID molecules on the air, but I'm hibernating more and more indoors <laughs> because I just can't stand the freezing cold air. Like I don't even walk down the street much. Um, usually, usually the dog gets a walk on day, but she's been quite difficult too, and so she's just been a yard dog. For a few days now because she's can't so maybe she doesn't like the cold too but um <laughs> but um yeah so it could be like maybe she doesn't like the cold and she's trying to be difficult so that she doesn't have to go out for a walk I mean, she likes generally walking but it could be the fact that she doesn't like Billy either I mean it could be a few factors but um but anyway, <laughs> so she's like not going out for walks much and I don't want to go out for walks at all. So, <laughs> so um, yeah. yeah, she likes running around the fence. Yeah, she's trying to break out and then she realizes she can't break out. But ultimately, like, yeah, the wind's just way too cold for me to go out for a walk. I I used to walk around in in Victoria feeling similar, and I used to have a scarf wrapped around the lower end of my face so that I wouldn't breathe in the cold air. <laughs> I'd be like, because it's just too cold when it's cold. And, uh, and everything, so. So that's why I'm sort of sticking to indoors a lot more not really that eager for journeys outside but I still go out for a walk and I like to I like to have a bit of a conversation on my phone while I'm going out for a walk because um because um I can see how long I've been walking for <laughs> generally I like to take a 20, 10 or 20 minute walk and everything so And 
that's usually a pretty good amount of exercise. I go up and down the hills, not just for the dog, but for me too, just to get your muscles working a little. It's a soft hill, but it's still better than just walking on just plain flat land. So I do make sure I'm walking around the hill. Dog comes with me. Oh, what's this? Oh my gosh, it's dying. <laughs> I bet that's a macadamia plant. It was so green and healthy, now it looks like it's dying. <laughs> All the other plants are doing okay. Okay. That, that front one has to be the macadamia plant because they always look like that when they're dying. But, uh, just might not have the right soil conditions, I have to say. By the way, that front one's gone all brown, unless it's the season. But it wasn't brown when it was planted. Anyway, the other day I watched like, a movie called Cruel Intentions and I was like, I used to hate that movie. I've watched it quite a few times before, but I used to hate it because just the the sexual exploits and everything sort of annoyed me. I thought it was a dumb topic of conversation, and <laughs> and I thought, uh, it it just sometimes makes me used to make me cringe. Just like you know the the lame ass wagering and. The bedding and the flirtations and what he finds funny and just everything about it used to sort of annoy me a little bit because I'm like, oh, does someone really find that funny? And then I'm like, <laughs> um, and I wasn't, I mean, I was quite young and I wasn't completely comfortable watching a movie based on a sexual exploit, but um, I think other people can re digest it maybe a little bit deeper and be like it's quite a fascinating movie. But when I was young, I was like, oh, it's a little bit of a cringe-worthy movie. <laughs> but um, you know, and I, I wasn't sure if it was even acted as best as it could. But um, and blah blah blah. So, but I watched it the other day, and I was like. It still makes me a little bit squeamish in some parts of it, but ultimately it's kind of like well edited, so it's a neat movie. Um, and I was like, oh, that, that wasn't as bad as I used to think it was. Um, but I wouldn't watch that movie every day, just like once in a while, because it's not my favorite movie. But I was watching all these little clips of, well, it started with. I was on the bot on the like the Foxtel, whatever you call it, movie channel, had like Scream, and I was like, I haven't watched Scream in a while, and I used to be totally scared of it, and so I watched it just to see what it was like. Now that you know it's twenty years since I've watched it, I was like, oh, it's actually quite kind of a pretty soft style horror movie. I mean, it's not really it's violent, but it's not really as violent as I thought it was, and it's. I'm not as, you know, spooky as I used to think it was. And so I was like, yeah, that's, that's an okay movie. And then, you know, of course, you know, that led me to think about another movie that I used to watch quite a bit, which was I Know What You Did Last Summer. And so I was watching the little clips on, on the internet. And then that led me to think, oh, yeah, and I used to watch, I, there was this, like, the Cruel Intentions movie. And so I investigated Cruel Intentions too. And then I ended up finding a free version of it on the internet. And I was like, I watched, I watched it, and I was like, you know, I, I remember that being a cringing movie, like a movie I used to sort of cringe at, but now it's like, oh yeah, it wasn't too bad. <laughs> but, um, I don't know. <coughs> and, uh, of course, so I've watched that, I'm like, bother to try and find it. I know what you did last summer on the internet. Um, because I used to watch that movie quite a lot. 
when I was like younger um, I used to be like I didn't know what I liked about it but I used to watch it all the time and everyone's like are you watching that stupid movie again? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know. I think it's like got a teeny fiction vibe to it. And I was sort of into teeny fiction sort of stuff at the time. And and I do I do like teeny movies, you know. All about the adventures of teenagers and stuff. I, still I watch them. So, you know. Um, so, yeah. So I guess that was sort of probably just my topic of interest at, at the time after having had climbed out of teenagers years myself so look at that dog Kiara you can't get through you can't get through you're stuck in this property lots of space that's a space. Look at that, it's a tree. Look at that. You don't get trees on every property. <laughs> We've got like t- t- 20. <laughs> and then another 20 here. She misses going exploring, but we don't have a fully uh, fence that she can't scramble out of at the back, so that's why, that's the purpose of the strip, the enclosed fencing, to, to break up the property. So she can't get to the back of the property. It was actually her movements that sort of edged it on so quickly. Otherwise, it might have just sat there as a huge property for ages, but... So she likes to scramble around, go into neighbor's yard, get caught, end up in trouble. We're like, well, we'd better enclose the front paddock of this property so she can't get through any of the fencing near the back because it's got holes and stuff in it and the one right at the back doesn't have any dog wire or anything so she can easily slip through it and it's like... It's just for her safety as well as as well as um, security, I guess. Knowing that if we let her outside, she won't be able to go into other people's properties. Like top of the agenda, because everyone gets pissed off to have a something that looks like a a wild dog <laughs> on their property. Because she's she's such a stupid dog. She likes to run after things and. And, you know, she got into a property down the road and it's like, ran up, totally broke into a chicken pen and chickens, chickens everywhere, startled, annoyed, owner was annoyed. And she was running off, off the lead and annoying people. So it was pretty crucial that we stopped her from breaking into people's yards and now she can't. But she's got all this property, I don't know why she, she has to raid her herself to this property now. And making it so that we can't walk her down the streets, just gonna end up making her a yard dog. But we're gonna have animals in the future, so she might get used to playing around with animals. We're gonna have goats and whatnot. So, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't think she wants to be a yard dog. But that's what she'll have to be if she can't walk on the lead. Cause she'd find if she could walk on the lead, we'd go to more and more places with her. She could get to visit the beach and go and drive to a mountain and blah blah blah. So but without her being a good dog, we're not taking her anywhere. So she'll have to be friends with this property and when we get animals she'll have to she'll have to um make do with just knowing the animals on the farm, I guess, if she wants to be dull and boring like that <laughs> but yeah it's nice that we haven't really had any huge weather problems yet I've got such a headache anyway so anyway I was talking about uh, 
old movies. We've got all these little twittering birds everywhere. They're like that size. They're so cute. The whole of that tree is over there. They get filled with hundreds of them. And they like to they like to be around it. I did see one on the ground though, so I was thinking maybe the dog attacked one. But it could have been dead for any reason, but I just hope that the dog didn't manage to get one because they do twitter and fly around fairly low and they don't get out of the dog's path and the dog will eat it. The dog's been capturing more mice in the house, so, which is good, but, you know, but, yeah, anyway. Now I was talking about old movies, so watching old movies sort of came to make me realise, um, memories and yeah I think I've actually already talked about my memories and I'm like I met someone who looked quite similar to someone in a movie and I thought I'd met them previously and I was like we got along so well and it's like we had met previously and stuff and he was like I don't know um and so I ended up spending some time with them for a couple of weeks so they sort of asked me what I was doing and I was like you know a little bit traumatized because I didn't have a job and I was living in a rental and of course I was using my savings to live there and he the guy actually got me a job he put in a good word with me at a company that he had links with and he got me a job and introduced me to some clubs and and, you know, I even watched him do, like, a portion of a movie and stuff. And we were, like, visited a movie set. And it was, like, pretty amazing experience for, like, two or three weeks. Romp around. And then, you know, he wanted to be dating me um, after a certain time. I think around when he was doing the movie, he had the intention to want to date me, and then I met his family, and I met I met his um, parent, who was like typically they're like twins, you know. He's like the older version of who I thought he had possibly been, and you know he he's like um. And he was like, no, he was like a steady no to the relationship. He was very polite about it at first, but uh, he, yeah, <laughs> he, he's, he could, he knows what his son's like because, you know, he looks like that himself, you know, quite a few years ago. He was like, no, 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 this is not a good idea at all. Um, and then, then he was like, when I met her, that was before you were actually born in a way. <laughs> so, and it was like, kind of embarrassing. Because I never dated them, I just knew them a little bit. And they were like, and, and anyway, the guy was like, and then the dad said, do you know how old this, this lovely young man is? You know, and it was like, you know, he was like a late teenager, and I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> but yeah, and then, then he tried to get me arrest, arrested, like the dad tried to get me arrested for having I dated someone quite younger than me, and then it was like, put into criticism, because the dad looks older than me, I, um, the son looks older than his years, and then I look like, you know, pretty much how I look, I, I don't, don't, don't look too old, don't look so young, but, <laughs> and it sort of was like this, <laughs> and, um, this problem issue where the dad wanted to teach me a lesson, the dad looks older than I do, <laughs> by many, many years, <laughs> um, and then the son looks older than what he had said, so everyone's like, well, I can see how she could have misconstrued him to be in his mid-twenties, because he looks like he could be 20 to 30. 
and then they were like, and you look like you could be 80, and you're trying to, you're trying to punish someone who, who sort of looks like they could, they're in their late 20s, so, you know, <laughs> the police thought, since he didn't quite look like a youth of a particular age, he, um, he looked like he could be mistaken between 20 to 30, and if he'd said that to me, they'd be like, I would have believed him. <laughs> And so, there wasn't any particular arrest. Um, it was, I think the dad was arrested in the end. Because he was trying to get violent in combat of, you know, the indecency of the situation. And so, since he was starting to get violent, I think he got arrested. And I was told to go home. My son was said not to lie and not to date me anymore, you know, because... It's just not a good idea facing a parent who has str- strong feelings and blah blah blah. And, and then later, the son was like in the car. He waved me over to the car and was like, you know, um, said a final goodbye, and then that was it. You know, it's the situation. I was like, <laughs> and that's what I was thinking of after I watched Cool, cool Intentions. I was like thinking. Oh, that reminds me of this, you know, it happened. Um, I guess it happened around 2013, 2000 or so, yeah. So, it's like, this situation sort of remind me of that. Because, yeah, I was like, oh, I have a memory. <laughs> but, yeah. I'm still waiting for this concert at the end of the year. I'm trying to be excited about it, but I'm trying to... I want to list, grab a band, a new band, and listen to only that band until the end of the year. I'm sort of... I usually do listen to, like, Britney, but I've sort of done my fulfill with Britney for quite a while. and You are hopeful, aren't you? And so I don't know who to listen to, and I'm like, I need to choose someone, because then that'll get me off the mood of the person I'm seeing. And uh, then it'll be like a surprise when I see all the music and stuff. It's like, going to be like, oh, I haven't listened to this music in a long time. It's all fresh and exciting. So it's sort of the method to ignore rather than listen to your favorite clips of the same singer, it's best to just cleanse your mind of all their songs and wait till the end of the year to uh, to get revamped. And then I can do what I like with film clips on the internet and watch them or leave them. But it's still pretty exciting, but I have to wait till I oh, is it two months before I can book my hotel. And then after I book my hotel, I'm going to see if I can arrange for, um, for photo shoots. Um, because I need to update my online profile. That's going to be through a few hundred grand down the toilet. But it should be A-OK. But I, I don't really remember why I didn't want to go to a concert in a while, other than the fact that I've been going through ups and downs, personally, personal ups and downs, but I'm like, it's been over 10 years since I've seen their concert, and last time I did see it, they I think they dedicated a song to me, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I wonder why I haven't actually been to the concert since that time. <laughs> Um, I don't even remember the last thing they might have said to me, and I just am like, how can I that how can I let that slip over my 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 mind that you know <laughs> there was a little bit of thought about me in the in the last quote that I'd seen, and I was like, um.
because they were really vamped and energetic for, to perform last time and then at the end it, it, it all came down and they deflated it I don't know if that was the last concert I'd seen with them in it but it was one of the last and I was like if that was the last concert why haven't I been back out of interest <laughs> it's like it should have captured my interest but I have I think I moved to back to the another state though and then I was sort of going through ups and downs um, but I've I have no idea I probably just had my own worries and the I probably had put on a bit of weight <laughs> Maybe I was being shy because I put it in a bit of weight at some stage, but I'm still kind of chubby, but I'm just gritting and bearing it. I've got myself down to a pretty approachable weight, so I'm not too shamefaced, but even though I've still got a bit of a double chin thing happening, <laughs> it's not as fit as I would like to be, but I was like thinking about that the other day, and I was like, if that's the last concert I've seen and they dedicated a song to me why didn't I go back and I was like I, I have no idea <laughs> but like you said you know I, I think I was just caught in a, a mood swing and I was just being a loner for like a, quite a few years and I'm only back up here because I lost support I've been house sharing before and I lost support and I couldn't get a rental and so I ended up after spending two weeks in a hotel I ended up coming up here I've stayed here for four years, <laughs> and only this year I got the brainy idea to go to a concert, so I don't know, maybe things just roll over like that. But, like the years roll over and you just, I don't know, but I couldn't have gone when COVID was around anyways, because I'm not va vaxxed at all. And um, theaters and even movies and theme parks were for vax only for a little while, particularly in the last year previously. And yeah, Kiara, all dropping. And uh, and anyway, um. So, yeah, so, I guess it must have just slipped my mind. Either that or as being, you know, while well, I was just busy thinking about myself and my feelings and my bad feelings and crying <laughs> and taking too many medications. <laughs> I was addicted to um, anti-stress medications for like five years. Um... I was like taking literally like one every day and then the doctors refused to give me adequate amounts of medications to last a month. Like they were giving me 30, then they reduced to 20, then they reduced to 15, then 10, then 5, and eventually 3. <laughs> and uh, here she comes running again. And... Uh, and it was because they could tell that I, I was just taking them and they couldn't see, really see a reason why I needed, continued to need them. And, <laughs> and they were like, you know, there are side effects to these kinds of pills, you know. <laughs> and I was like, oh, what's that? And it's like diabetes, <laughs> liver disorders, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, but they make me feel so good, you know. But um, they tried to get me on a... Uh, something, some bar barbiturate and replacement. I was like, no, I don't want it. I, want, I don't want that barbiturate medication. <laughs> um, so, I, but barbiturates, I think, take you to a different level and I didn't really want to explore it. I, I said, well, no, these ones do what, whatever I want a medication to do. And so for like five years straight, I was like taking like I ended up having to fraction, fractionize the medication so that I take a tiny little bit every day as opposed to like have a pill or half a pill or a quarter of a pill. I'd be like breaking it up in tiny bits and it's like every time I took it it's like so much better um, <laughs> for me personally but um, yeah 
So I think that's where I went for a little while. <laughs> it's all about my feelings and and I had so much stress. I had like this shaking, not shaking thing, but I sort of looked undone. Um, I just probably had a little bit of a personality thing going on, and I was, I was feeling like an old granny because I was. Oh gosh, here she is, excited again. <laughs> And, um, yeah, and I, I felt totally run down. Like, every day I'd wake up and then I'd feel totally run down. I'd go out for a walk. I'd feel run down again, you know. And so I was, like, I was feeling like a little little old granny at some stage because I'd be, like, heavily supporting myself when walking on off tra- public transport because um, my knees were very sore at the time, too, because I'd drunk something and it affected my knees. And then I was, like, you know, hobbling around with these sore knees and feeling like, feeling like crap, really. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I, I just persevered with everything. Just the move out of that state, though, was the best. I think I made up my mind not to live with the same people I had been living with previously, so, because they're not the best company. I mean, they stole... They stole precious things from me, things that I'll never get back, Memo- things that were like memories and things I wanted to keep. I had a couple of signed items from previous relationships and, you know, s- s- they just organize people to take them, like they have friends, invite friends over, friends take them, or they let them be taken, but either way... I just have to be out for a day and something's been stolen and I was like, I've moved out of of living with them quite a few times because they would steal something precious and irreplaceable, something you can't get back. I had a Christmas card from someone who was like a celebrity and it's signed, it has beautiful words on it, lovely writing, and it's like, no offense, that was my fucking car. <laughs> uh, it was a precious, it's a precious thing, and so was this other signed item, and all these other things, and I had a signed purse, and, you know, and photos, I had a little thing of photos, I had, I had a, a program from when I was dance that has my face in it, you know, and I'm like, Oh yeah, no one would ever believe that I was ever a dancer, you know, because everyone's like, you know, you're not a dancer, you've never been a dancer, but, you know, so I kept this program for when I was a dancer, because no one would ever believe that I'd ever had enough talent to to dance, and I was just keeping it for myself, and it's an important memory, and all this other stuff, and I was like, I was like, you know, it's so pissed off many times, I was like, it's just the worst people to live with, really. Um, because, especially because of all that happened, like all my stuff was taken, all my, my important stuff, I was like, I, I have no idea where it went to, but they, they stole it and took it, so I'm not, I hope in the future, I just don't have to rely on people, I know I'm relying on someone now, but <laughs> in the future I don't want to go back to like that kind of living with people you can't trust and people who gave me a particularly hard time and uh, I didn't particularly enjoy them <laughs> they're relatives so <laughs> and everything that they think and feel is really off key um, you know and everyone everyone outside the family like treats your parents as they're the most important people in the world and should be respected and listened to and blah 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 it's like they're not even respected <laughs> they're not to be respected or listened to because a lot of times it, they're talking crap, you know. <laughs> and, um, and, uh, and so I hate to have people's opinions formed on, on my relatives as opposed to just formed on me because I ignore my relatives a lot. <laughs> I don't listen to what they say. I just tell them what I'm doing and that's the way it should always be, especially when you're over 18. Because otherwise, we'll have all these conflicted feelings. It was like alarm and 
surprise and shame and embarrassment and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know, and while they're raging, they're having all these emotions of bitterness, jealousy, shock, you know, all these other things. They're just like coming out through their mouths in a lot of words, you know. And people are like, oh, this is so serious. I mean, whatever they're saying, it's so serious, but it's not. It's just like they're just rambling. You don't listen to them, you just listen to me. <laughs> Even though I don't know the best, I, I probably make wrong decisions all the time, but you know, for when you're over eighteen, when you're over twenty one or whatever, it's like you don't you don't listen to your parents and have them override your opinions. You just listen to you. <laughs> you know. So. so I hope in the future I'm living by myself and able to look after myself but it's like such a crawl I've been needing the same thing since I was a teenager and I've ruined my whole bank account just trying to get a good stable home going and it's always floundered <laughs> it's like it's just like I jumped in too early I would choose the wrong builder In, inside my mind I have almost everything right but yeah and then yeah, I jump here and there and everywhere. It's like I've had over 50 properties previously, all of which I can't get a handle on because I just don't have enough money. A lot of the times so I'm jumping only once I had a really good amount of money and that was flogged because I had a really bad builder who was too busy plucking money out of my hands as opposed to giving me the house I wanted. And, of course, you know, I didn't have any backup money after he had gone over a million dollars over budget, so... And you think, why the hell would you give someone a million dollars over budget? I don't know. I'd already spent like $700,000 and it's like, well, that's a waste of $700,000 if the project ends now. And they've only done like half a building. I'm like, yeah, that's, no, that's not right. Nothing about that was right, but that's what happened when I had a good amount of money to stabilize myself. And I'm like, if I had a better builder, um, I would have been able to float in the house on my own but since I had a crappy builder that was just digging money digging me for money I sort of lost the plot and ended up having the house seized so I didn't get to sell it I didn't get any repayments it was just seized and abandoned considered abandoned property now it's a car park so that's like one of the most frequent points of my mon money loss <laughs> I actually lost like two million dollars in total on something that I hundred I owned and yeah. But that was ages ago and then ever since, you know, I bought a, a cheap house, a cheap house, a cheap house that drained me over heaps of money. <laughs> I know the cheap house from, you know, I bought all these houses, I built a house, you know, but I, I sold a heap of them. A heap of them I did manage to sell. And then of course I used the money for repayments of the mortgage but um yeah but some of them I didn't manage to sell um and some sometimes I sold it sold it and was in debt a little bit because I sold a bit under the value that I had bought it from as and all this other stuff so yeah But in the future, I would hope that something works in my favor and I manage to actually get some independence. But at the moment, I can only think of, at the moment, I can only think of running around modeling. <laughs> um, I can't think of work and jobs, even though I apply for them, apply for three today, but I'm like, I'm like thinking, should I, should I take modeling more seriously? And that's when I start dipping into all these different, all these different films in real life where you sort of try and get out of it by screaming, so <laughs> get out of the bad parts of it by having arguments and stuff, I don't know, but I'm not a teenager anymore and I look so much older and I have to sort of refine myself a little bit more and my skin's no good so at the moment, it's like, yeah, but other than that, you know, it's like, I'm with a modeling company now, now and you know, at the end of the year I'm going to take more photos for it, so it's probably a waste of money, but 
when you're in the room, people surprise you and they're like, so you're hooked up with a modeling agency, what's, what's your agent's number and blah, blah, blah. And then you give it over and then you get end up getting paid. So, so it's really good when you're attached to something because when you're roaming around the world, it's like people come up to you and ask you for your profile numbers and things. And it's like, yeah, I'm with an agency. And then you get paid. So it's cool. Anyway, that's enough talking. I'm going to go outside and do something else. I've been walking around for 40 minutes now, so that's a good enough, I think. It's almost an hour's worth of walking, really. So. <laughs>